We start the episode off with a knock at the door. Who is it? Ah! He's like, man, who the fuck is knocking on the door at this early in the morning? Well, Charles goes out there and Charles sees some flowers. Now, last night I was telling you guys about 1-800-Flowers, so we don't need to go over that. We know what 1-800-Flowers is. We know how to finesse the system. We know how to create multiple emails and use and forward the same code and go ahead and put that in so you can send out multiple flowers to multiple people. Now, what I'm saying is do this for, like, family members, like your sisters, your aunties, your mom. Like, you know what I'm saying? Don't do it to the women. Don't do it to the women, guys. Don't. Come on, don't be a, a piece of shit. You know what I mean? Be a, be a true gentleman. Well, Dr. Reese is a little bit different. Dr. Reese is sending the roses to a married woman straight to the house with a handwritten letter. Now, I've never been one to like really write letters. I know I used to listen to Aaliyah when I was growing up, and I remember Leah said, I'm writing you a four-page letter, and I enclosed it with the kiss. And when I write more, he better get it on time. I'm writing you a love letter tonight. I said, damn, I'm a Leo, four pages. You really can't love a nigga that much to write a nigga four pages. And her four pages is front and back one page, front and back two page, front and back three page, front and back four page. In my book, that's eight pages. And I'm not reading past a paragraph unless it's something dealing with like a check or something where I'm at work. Well, Charles, he sees these flowers and like any real digger, he's looking like who the fuck is sending flowers to the crib? Who's sending flowers to the crib? Yeah, Russell, he did. Russell Hornsby, Hornsby he did direct this one. I was watching his, um, his Instagram when they were talking about it. Now he looks at this and he's looking at the letter. Let's, let's we gotta we gotta zoom in because we gotta we gotta see what this says. We gotta see what this says because this is some bold shit right here. Well, the letter comes in. The letter comes in the filet mignon at I guess uh Kara's Kira's the filet mignon at uh let's just say Kira's will change your life can't wait to see you tomorrow night reese the filet mignon at kira's will change your life can't wait to see you tomorrow night oh no oh no See you tomorrow night. Who's this to Lucille? Filet Mignon. What the fuck is Filet Mignon? It will change your life. Can't wait to see you tomorrow night. Nikki! You Nikki get down here! You know a nigga named Reese? No, damn, I don't! Hey, don't you yell at me, girl. You know a Reese? You ain't getting no filet mignon tomorrow, girl. Then where's the for then? Who's sending flowers? Because Lucille is married. Lucille is married, so I know she ain't getting I didn't send these flowers. Who, who's sending you flowers? Oh, you on that birth control again. You acting a fool up there. Fuck you, Dad. I got to go to school. Now, now, who sent this to you? Get down here, Nikki. Answer. Answer for yourself. Get down here, girl. I told you that it ain't mine. Okay. Well, me and your mom are going to talk about this. Lucille come downstairs. She's like, oh, Charles, the flowers. Charles said, oh, don't play that flower shit with me. Who is this? Who is Reese? Who is Reese? Filet Mignon. Oh, you read my letter, Charles? You damn right I did. I pay the bills in this house. Oh, you don't do that, Charles. We did this last night. We do this every night, Charles. I gave you something three weeks ago. And you down here reading my letters. Well, you better believe I'm reading your letters. Someone's sending some, some flowers to my house. I'm going to read all the letters, damn it. Oh, Charles, no, you're not. This is my life. This is how I'm going to live. I'm going to decide. This ain't childish shit. This ain't high school games. Remember that, y'all. This ain't high school. This ain't high school. This ain't high school. This ain't 
high school, 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 school. Keep high school in the back of your mind. I'm going to connect the dots a little bit later on. But keep high school in the back of your mind. Keep high school. So now Charles in here, he's upset. Oh, Reese, I thought that nigga's name was... I thought the nigga name was Maurice. Oh, y'all got nicknames. Oh, yeah, we do, Charles. He calls me Lucy. Lucy? I used to call you Lucy. Well, not anymore, Charles. When you stopped paying bills around here, you started having to call me Miss Lucille. Oh, I'm not calling nobody no Miss Lucille for my house. I don't have you calling me Mr. Charles. You call me Charles all the time. You used to call me Charlie. Oh, well, that's when things were good, Charlie. Oh, Lucille, you didn't cross the line now. Nikki, get down here. Get to school. I'm going to take Nikki to school, all right? When I get back, Lucille, these flowers better be gone. No, Charles, I think it's time for you to move out. Oh, we're not doing this again. I got to go to work at General Motors. I got to go get down on that picket line and try to get my job back. And you're over here going on dates. And now you have him sending letters to the house. He already thinks he's Terry's dad. Oh, is there something you need to tell me, Lucille? Oh, I'm not telling you. I'm not explaining nothing to you, Charles. We haven't been messing around since high school, and it's none of your business. Oh, it's none of my business, but this filet mignon is at my house. How are you going to get this into my house? You know we don't eat filet mignon. I'm not a pescatarian. I eat red meat around here. You talking about filet mignon, changing your, changing your life? What life? This is our life. We built this. I've been working for us since day one. 1966, when we first met, I've been putting in there work ever since then, Lucille. Don't you tell me you're going out on a date with this man again. You put that red dress on the other night. Came back, delivered a baby, and he called my son, Terry, son. That ain't his son, is it? Is it? Please tell me it ain't. I'm sorry I'm yelling at you, Lucille. I'm just hurt at this moment. You got roses sent over here. I don't have no extra money to buy no roses. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lucille. I just don't know what's going on. Cause... You talk about fixing up the house, but then upstairs in your closet, you got all those brand new clothes. And Mo been saying that you could have fixed the house if you stopped buying clothes. And everybody said, Mo, she can get brand new clothes. But now it's making sense because Mo knew what the fuck he was talking about a couple of weeks ago, a couple of years ago. But everybody looked at Mo and said, Mo was tripping. And now Charles is over here hurt because Lucille is going on a date with a new dress, getting filet mignon when he got to cook dinner by himself. Oh, Lord. Ah. Uh Oh, why? Why? Charles said all those clothes upstairs. She said, Charles, I deserve something new, too. You buying new instruments. I'm buying instruments to try to make some money. I'm not buying instruments to serenade women. I'm buying it to make money. She said, oh, Charles. Oh, Charles. No, Nika, I don't listen. I'm in character. That's not me. This is Charles. I'm talking from Charles. Charles don't know what play me young is. Come on, man. See, that's why when I get in story mode, I can't read the chat because y'all think this is me. I'm doing the back and forth of what was going on. We on the clock right now. You can't say Mo think this. I'm in character. I'm in character. I'm in character, man. Jeez Louise. They putting the blame on you, Mo. They putting the blame on you. Now I know how Charles feels. People are pointing fingers at me, accusing me of something I didn't do. That was Charles. And I heard it small. They only give you small portions. They give you little bitty portions. They give you little bitty portions. They give you little bitty balling, nigga. It ain't no 12-ounce ribeye. I don't even know where you go fishing. Where'd they get that from? Lake Erie? Where'd they get filet mignon from? Charles don't know nothing. All Charles knows is he want his wife back. And we over here arguing, what ocean does filet mignon come out of? No, come on. He wants his wife back. He's hurting right now. All he knows is that the house needs reconstruction. It needs to be renovated. Uh, the foundation is a little crooked. He built this house with his hands. He built. He said he built this house with his hands, y'all, brick by brick. He laid the foundation and he built the house. Then it was mixtape after mixtape, and the next thing you know, he was running the south. Well, that was Young Jeezy, but that's either here or there. How would you feel if your wife 
had roses sent to the door. We on the clock, but ask yourself, what would you do if your wife had got roses from a doctor who delivered a baby on your floor and the only way to... Well, I don't even know what else we could do with this because she's about to go eat. The only way to feed her is with Dr. Reese. And he might be feeding her a little bit more than that filet mignon, but we're going to get there. Get that like button. All right. So they got the flowers here. Charles and Lucille, they just had a, a, a blow up. Now, Nikki's upstairs and she's hearing this. I don't know if you guys watched the director's cut or not, but I was watching the, uh, the director's cut and Nikki was upstairs. She was popping the, the, the birth controls and she was crying. You know, you know how they cry. She was crying. She was leaning against the door. Why are you in? She popped another 30 and she did the little slide down the wall. <laughs> and then this is the moment where Nikki is in the garage right now. While they doing this arguing, we don't know what's really going on, but we know what's going on in the background. All you hear is this. Like, what the fuck is that noise? They in there arguing. Oh, no, Charles. I'm going to love who I want to love. Whole time, Nikki in the garage still in twos. Nikki like, okay. Nah, this ain't good enough. I'm sorry. Nah, fuck that one. Yeah, this one might be all right. Ah, here we go. Yeah, this is this the one we taking to school right here. This is the one we taking to school right here. Nikki in the garage. Ah, ah. Nikki in the garage. She in the toolbox. She got that damn box cutter. We didn't even know that that was going on behind the scenes. Did y'all know that Nikki was in the garage right now stealing shit? Nikki is in the garage right now looking for a box cutter. Nikki is in the garage right now. Oh! I'm going to protect myself. Like, Whoa, Nikki. <laughs> when you approach Nikki, you got to say, Nikki, put the BC down. Nikki, put the BC down. Come on, Nikki. Give me the box cutter. Nikki, give me, give me the box cutter. It's going to be all right. I'm all the protection you need. We fail you. I'm sorry. But no one's paying attention to little Nikki. No one's been paying attention to Nikki. Nobody. Nikki is in the garage right now with a pack, a BC, and a box cutter. Lord knows what she's about to get into. Well, from here, the next time we see anybody in the family, well, we, we do see... Uh, we do see Lucille over at the crib, so we gotta we gotta jump over there to this part. I'm starting to like uh, I'm starting to like Wanda's mama, man. I'm starting to like Wanda's mama. I think we need more on screen time with Wanda's mama. I like her, but anyway, over at Wanda's house, Terry finally shows up, and Lucille is over here. Because remember when she came downstairs, Nikki actually gets arrested the next day because. The date is the next day. So this is the end of that first night. The first night is when, uh, you know, saying Jay Push and everybody's getting kidnapped. So this is the end of the first night because this takes place. This takes place over two nights. Lucille goes to see Wanda and the baby. She's living back at the mama house. Now, Lucille's like, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. He is. He is a good father. She said, nah, if you want to be a good father, you need to raise that baby. She said, you don't need no appointment to see his baby. Why the mama talking about? Yeah, he do. We'll put your ass on that schedule. Put your ass on that schedule. Well, anyway, everyone leaves because this is Lucille's story. Now, Lucille is a loving mother. We can't take that from Lucille. Yeah, she's doing some stuff, but this is what adults do. Like, whenever my parents have problems, I, I, I tell both of them, hey, whatever y'all problems are, you can't talk to me about that. What am I going to do? Sit down with one of my parents, like, hey, this is what you need to do right. Man, they my parents. That ain't my job. That's between y'all. Y'all relationship, y'all handle it. My parents still together. They've been married, what, 35 years? Yeah, they didn't get married till my little brother was born. 
They said, fuck that when I was born. But it's all to the point, though, they still together, though. So I think they've been together like 40 years, and then they had me. I made 38 years, and then my brother. So they've been married 30. Yeah, they've been married 35 years. Damn, this is their 35th anniversary. Oh, no, this would be. Yeah, I think it's this year. Yeah, anyway, now she's talking about, see, you act just like your daddy. That's what they always trying to do. Everybody put a won't they do it in the chat. Won't they do it in the chat? Lucille talk about you acting just like your daddy. You ripping and running the street. The apple don't fall too far from the tree, Terry. I'm like, damn. Why is she trying to treat Terry like he doughboy from Boys in the Hood? He ain't did nothing to nobody. Terry ain't did nothing to nobody but pay the bills. And Terry, he calls her out. He says, oh, maybe me and you would come from the same cloth, mama. Last I saw, you was fucking around with, uh, what you call him? Reese? Yeah, Nikki told me everything. Did you know Nikki's going to school with box cutters, mama? Did you know Nikki is scared for her life? You probably didn't even know that. You out with Dr. Reese? Yeah, I heard she's on birth control now. Uh-huh. Yeah, I heard. Yeah, I heard she popping them things like Skittles, ma. I heard you and Dr. Reese are out and about all times of the night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard about you too, mama. She said, uh-uh. You better mind your business, boy. And Terry's like, damn. You're right, ma. I respect you, but I heard about you and Dr. Reese. Now, Charles is at the house crying. Charles ain't got nothing else to do. We don't know what Charles does during the day. They keep trying to tell us that that Charles has a job, but none of us can confirm if Charles has a job. We remember Charles quit, and we ain't we ain't seen Charles really go back to work. But Lucille gets called out, and from there, the next day happens. Nothing good happens when it rains outside. Well, little Nikki goes to school. She just got Canaan start. She just got Kane and Stark. She goes through. She's been hanging out with Breeze an awful lot. Dee, 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 dee. All right. Look at security. Now, help keep crack off of school grounds. Just say no. Then they got the U.S. Army up here. So what, is Nikki in high school now? But anyway, security like, da nah, da nah, da nah, da. Nah. Open up that bag. Well, Nikki goes over there. So, I was kind of confused at this moment. Did they just install metal detectors today? Like Nikki didn't know that they had metal detectors at the school. What is this? The first day of school. Cause Nikki comes in here. She's like, well, I don't have anything to make the metal detector go off. And then she looks in the bag. She's like, Charles Flannery. And she didn't try to take like, like just a blade or something. You know, she would have been all right if she'd have, if she'd have just took the blade, she'd have been all right. But she took the whole box cutter. Like, she's trying to get surgical. She went through the metal detector. That motherfucker said, He said, all right, what's in that bag? Now, you know, the metal detector makes different noises for the, uh, the density of the metal. I don't know if these old metal detectors do that. But yeah, this motherfucker sounding off. And it, it Breeze is like, Oh, no, 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 that is mine. So Breeze is a real one. Hey, I already know what the answer is, but put a one in the chat if you taking the charge for Nikki. Put a two in the chat if you acting like you don't know what the fuck that is. If you Breeze, put a one in the chat if you taking that charge. Put a two in the chat if you don't know what that is.
that motherfucker. I'm thinking, okay, it's a little Nikki. She probably got like like a fork or something. She probably had breakfast before she left. I mean, I know her brothers are dope boys. I'm going to tell y'all one thing. We in the BMF, uh, and this is BMF Immortal. So I, I, I got, you know, I always got to keep it real with you. I don't remember what the numbers were. I think it's one, take the charge, two, don't take the charge. Well, first of all, I ain't got like no kiss or no nothing. I'm barely even getting hugs from Nikki. I'm not taking no charge. First of all, I'm not taking no charge regardless. Secondly, even if she was giving me some cutty, I'm still not taking that charge. I'm like, damn, Nikki, they got you. Oh, man, you know, hey, call me. I'm going to go to class, but call me. You know what I'm saying? Let me know how that go. Man, I ain't taking no charge for no Nikki. He said, what is this? He said, oh, coach gave us some jerseys. I, you know, I was cutting them open. He turned around and said, Flannery. I was like, well. No, nah, they didn't kiss till after this. They didn't kiss till after this. They never kissed before this. They ain't never, they ain't, it wasn't no real kiss. See, the birth control, the BC wasn't involved. The, the kiss after the BC was after she got out of jail. He was throwing the rocks at the window while she was doing the dishes. But yeah, as soon as that box cutter came out, I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is how it would have been. That box cutter would have came out. I'd have been over here with Nikki. Me and Nikki on this side. What is this? Oh man, you know that's mine. Coach gave me that because uh we got these new jerseys. I'm gonna cut them open. He turned around and say, Flannery. Oh, Nikki, you're bringing weapons to school now. Officer, I wouldn't even expect that from her. What Nikki? Weapons, really? Really, Nikki? Give me wait, you gotta walk your talk and I got you. This is uh this is breeze. This is backup security on the on the west end. Yeah, we got a, a armed individual down here. Hold on. Nigga, this hurts me more than it hurts you, girl. You know I love you and I'm gonna be there for you, but I gotta turn you in. This is you're on the wrong path. You need you need an intervention. Maybe some jail time will do you good. Uh yeah, copy that. Uh sir, what's your badge number? Yeah, uh this is a, a assistant. Oh, can you hear me? We're going to have to escort her down. You go ahead and take her down there. I'm going to go ahead and stand here. All right, next person through, Nikki. I expected better from you. I told my mama you were the one, but now you're the one I need to look out for. Damn. Sometimes, sometimes you got to assess the situation, and you don't want to throw your life away. You don't want to. I've been there before. I've been there before, y'all. Y'all know the story. I got, they they tried to get rid of me. They tried to throw me up under, you know what I mean? They tried to lock me up. They tried to get me out of school. I would have to go get my GED. So I know when it comes to blades and, you know what I'm saying, getting kicked, I know how it is. So I'm glad, I'm glad that they got this one blade off the street. You know what I mean? Like. I, it, I mean, think about it, y'all. We start off with stealing. We got a drug addiction. And now we carrying weapons. Where, what's next? What's next? What is the next crime that, like, what are the next, you know what I mean? What is the next, not, not if it's going to happen. The question is, when is going to happen with Nikki? We're just seeing everything escalate. It, it went from sticky fingers on the church ground to... Popping BC like skills and addiction and and now carrying weapon. When is it gonna stop? When? When is it gonna stop? That's all I'm asking. When? Well, they arrest Nikki ass. They get Nikki the hell up out of here. And this is what our prediction was. We all agreed on that too. We still don't trust you. Well, they got Nikki in here, but they ain't got her in handcuffs or nothing. So Nikki's in here, and both of the parents got to show up to this. After a long days of work, they got to come up here and get her daughter out of here. 
You know, that's the worst thing ever. You going up there. I, you know, I, I used to get in trouble so much. I was never embarrassed for my parents coming up to the school. In, in fact, me and my brother used to get in trouble so much. I never told y'all my dad was a substitute teacher. My dad was an unofficial substitute teacher for my brother in the third grade. My brother, well, there was a there was a lady, there was a teacher named Miss Hammett. She had red hair, but she used to keep all of the black kids in, so they never got recess. Now, she wasn't my teacher in third grade, but she was a, get across the hall, so whenever you had, like, timeout or you couldn't go to recess, you had to go to her room. Well, it turns out she continued to do that over the years. So my dad used to go to school with my brother, and he used to just sit in the class all day. So he was like the, the school pops, you know what I mean? He basically looked out for, like, all the black people up there because they, they wouldn't go fuck with my dad. But yeah, my dad was like a substitute teacher. But whenever kids got in trouble, they would bring him, hey, Mr. Moore, can you? So my dad would like talk to the kids and shit like that. Now, he wouldn't get paid or nothing, but they were making sure my brother wasn't fucking up, really. Because that my brother, I don't know if that nigga had like ADHD or something, but that was a wild nigga. I remember my parents took him to get tested to see if like there was something like wrong with the nigga. They were like, no, nah, this nigga just wild. <laughs> this nigga's just a wild one. My brother used to be crazy. I was bad, but he was wild. But anyway, they go up here and they talk to Nikki. Hey, Nikki, what are you doing? What are you doing with that play? I need a protection, mom and dad. Protection from what? I see Darius die. No one even thinks about me. Nikki, are you on something right now? No. This is what mom gave me. What would mom give you? She gave me birth control, dad. I've been popping them things crazy. So Nikki's in here, and I mean, I understand why she took the blade. You do. Charles is like me. <laughs> Nikki got ready to start crying. That nigga Charles looked at Lucille. I'm a, I'm gonna go get the car. I'm gonna go get the car. Cause I wouldn't know how to talk in this situation. Like I don't I don't know, man. I wouldn't know what to say to my child. Hey, man, you fucking up, bro. You know what I mean? Like, what am I? What, what are you supposed to say to a kid in this moment? Like, you, you took my box cutter. I was looking for that. But little Nikki's in jail, and I guess this is a moment for her to like really, you know, what I'm saying, get in touch with her with herself and try to find out who she is. Now let's get into the good parts. Now, as we mentioned, everybody was getting some cutty this week, except for, excuse me. Alicia said, offer protection. I mean, what protection can you give your daughter? Like, he's going to go to school and be a security guard for her? Like, I mean, what security? Like, that's that's this guy's job, though, ain't it? That's this guy's job. Protection? That's this guy's job, right? That's what we paying him for, the big bucks. <laughs> she said, Nikki is the Flannery's last hope. Shit, if me can get this damn work up off the ground, man, we won't have, we don't need no hope. We can get a piece of the pie. <laughs> he ain't working. That's the solution. All right, I, I, I respect it. Kenna said, I'm playing no homeschooling. Nah, I can't, I can't homeschool no kids now. Fuck that. I get too easily distracted. I'd be wanting to take naps. Like, man, if I ain't have a job, man, I probably wouldn't be getting up to two or three o'clock, man. That used to be the good life. I ain't gonna lie to you. But at the Flannery house, Charles is upstairs making some new beats. Lucille is out in the streets trying to get a nice little beat in. And you hear some little pebbles. Pat, pat, pat. Damn, who the fuck is this? We look outside. It's this nigga Breeze. Now, remember, Breeze, he talking about, I'm going to protect you. I'm going to make sure you're all right at all times. Man, this nigga, when she got arrested, that nigga was nowhere to be found. This nigga, do y'all think Breeze did the whole, he went to school the whole day? 
when Nikki got arrested, do y'all think Breeze like skipped school to go down in the precinct or he went to class and stayed in class all day? And then he showed up. Hold on, what time it is? It's 9.20? Yeah, so, yeah, it's a quarter past nine. Okay. Okay. Quarter past nine. This nigga Breeze pulling up. He still got his school uniform on. Look, Nikki just got out of jail too. I know a I know a criminal when I see one. He went to class and stayed. Oh man, nah. hey, y'all trying to hey y'all y'all trying to say Breeze ain't like that? Nigga, it's just big me, nigga. Boom. I'm really like that. See, I watched the director's cut, and what I saw, what I saw was Breeze was fighting. Like when they were trying to take her down there, they had to get two police officers to hold Breeze back. Breeze like, you let her go, man. It's mine, man. He was trying to take that charge for it. That's what I saw. Y'all probably did. Y'all probably fast forwarded because y'all, y'all were probably so sick that I made this prediction last night. Y'all probably, oh man, this nigga Mo, y'all fast forwarded. But what I saw was Breeze in there. He was trying to take the charge. You're like, that's my blade, man. Look, my fingerprints is on it. He's trying to touch it, tell me my fingerprint. Nikki's over here. They got her in a 12 step program, they got her in rehab. She got anger management classes now. She's like, what are you doing here, Breeze? She's like, I had to make sure my girl was, you know what I'm saying? I had to make sure my girl was straight. She's like, I like you, Breeze. She said, I like you too. And Breeze finally gets his kiss. See, Breeze is smart. Breeze is playing the game how you're supposed to play it. Now, Breeze is, all right, fellas, take a, take a, take a page out of Breeze's book. See, we all know the story. Put a put a five in the chat if you know if you know the story of Darius. Put a five in the chat if you know the story of Darius. Because if you know the story of Darius, then you'll know how Breeze is playing this whole situation. See, everybody knows that Darius. Little Darius, y'all remember little Darius? They say he got stabbed twice by some wild, crazy dude. But the reason he got stabbed up is because he made one fatal mistake. He made one mistake. And that was stepping up to protect Nikki. Oh, he stood up for Nikki and got stabbed up. He stood up and got laid down. So when they said that that charge was about to drop, Breeze was kind of like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. It popped up in his head. He's like, that's mine. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Breeze stepped up and he got stabbed. She got a box cutter. If I say it's mine. And then, oh, no, 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 no. So when they were like, put your hands up, motherfucker. He was like this. <laughs> Breeze is over there like he ain't snitching. He ain't snitching because it says Flinnery on there. So he's just letting them know that I'm not a Flinnery. My name is Breeze. <laughs> you want the Flinnery? Look at her backpack. This ain't snitching, y'all. This is not snitching. They already know she's a Flinnery. The security already identified her as security. This is not snitching. All I know is my nose is itching, but I got my hands up. I'm trying to scratch my nose. I'm trying to let them know my nose is itching, but I, I but it's just, it's, you know what I mean? It's just, it's, that nigga said, man, I am not dying fucking around with little Nikki, but he ends up getting him a little kissy kissy. And here we go. The highlight of the evening. The highlight of the evening, Lucille and Dr. Reese getting it on. Well, 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 well. Oh, baby. Let's get it on. Let's get it on. They in the car and they going at it. It's hot. It's funky in here. I thought we was going to eat. I thought we was going to eat. What up, Havana? 
I thought we was going to eat, but instead we in here doing all this kissing. I ain't gonna lie to you. Yeah. We too old for all of this. We do over all of this. A couple of pecs here, a couple of pecs there, but let's let's shake, rattle, and roll. Now, remember, I told you guys to remember the word high school. She told Charles, we're not playing these high school games. But then she tells Reese she feels like she's a high school girl again. Which one is it, Lucille? You not playing the high school games or you feeling like a high school girl again? I like, man, you telling Charles one thing, when you telling Reese the, uh, the complete opposite. You don't, we're not doing these high school games, Charles. You know, these high school games, who won me over? But when you get with Dr. Reese, the one he was in competition with in high school, you feel like you back in high school. I said, damn, Lucille, not Mama Meach, though. They got her out here. She talking about, this is all her, this ain't me. We ain't even going to mention what she said. But this nigga, Dr. Reese, talking about, oh, I'll wait for you forever. You got to decide who you're going to be with. She said, oh, I just want to have fun. And at that moment, as soon as, this is exactly how it would have been for me in that car. I'm going to show y'all. You got to choose between me and him, Lucille. Oh, Dr. Mo, I just want to have fun. Fun, you say? So Lucille, talk to me. What what is this fun you speak of? I, I want to have fun too, you know. Um, I mean, when you say fun, what would you describe as fun? Like, what activities consist of fun? Because I mean, we got space, you know. We we got. We got it. We got. We got some. You know, this hey, this motherfucker lay all the way down. I mean, what you trying to do when you say fun? What kind of fun are you talking? Hold on, let me hydrate a little bit, girl. You know how I get. I get a little thirsty. You know what I mean? You over here too. Ooh, 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 Lucille, you talking about fun? Hold on, let me get right. You know, I ain't the same as I was in high school. I need a little energizer, bunny. You know what I mean? I need a little bit of juice. You know what I'm saying? Not the juice, but the juice. What kind of fun is Lucille talking about? As an adult, when you tell somebody you've been kissing, you just want to have fun. Oh, girls, just want to have fun. What kind of fun is Lucille talking about? I was, I was looking at this like... You, what, what kind of fun you 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 say we we about to have food? What kind of fun we having? We no, not that fun. Wait, 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 wait. What, what, what kind of fun we talking about, Lucille? It's hot in here. 
It's the foggy as a motherfucker. I got a goddamn full suit on. What kind of fun we talking about? Yeah. What kind of fun we talking about, Lucille? It's getting hot in here, so hot. So take a, what kind of fun we talking about, Lucille? You didn't got a nigga rowdy. I'm rowdy. I'm Curse the cowardly lion in this motherfucker. I'm trying to figure out what the kind of fun we talk about. We'd have been doing too much kissing in this motherfucker. We need to get to the love making part. You know what I mean? Yeah, I didn't bitch in this motherfucker. We over here kissing this shit. You blowing your funky. I just want to have fun. Hey, nigga. Listen, it ain't that much fun in the world. We 40 years old. We 40 years old in Detroit in the 90s. Ain't nothing open. Put them legs. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button, man. That's Lucille's story, man. We don't know what they did that night, and that ain't on us. It's for us to use our imagination, man. Hit that like button, man. Damn. Y'all think they got it on? Or they just have fun? And is this considered fun? That's what I want to know. Is this considered fun? Like, just kissing and shit? Because I know, me personally, at this point, I'm a doctor. I'm going to tell her I'm on call. So listen, if we're going to do this, we got to do this. Because if I get another call, if I got to deliver another baby or something, then As J. Cole said, we got a good thing. Don't know if I'm going to see you again. Fuck all this. It's just it's too much. Like, we too close to each other, breathing on each other to just be considered fun. I got to go, baby. I got to go. All right. But that's the Lucille, Charles, and Nikki story.